Paddling out in New Jersey's surf can be one of the best feelings in the world. Just meters from the picturesque sandy beaches of Stone Harbor, it's hard to imagine what dangers lurk in the clear blue waters. Here, we witness a young surfer who is pulled underwater by a shark. As she desperately kicks for the surface, she can feel the pressure in her leg building as the shark holds on. Can she make it to the surface before her lungs give out? Can she paddle her way out of the surf? Hit the like button and subscribe. This is Fierce. It was May 21, 2023 in New Jersey. As the spring weather began to heat up, young surfer Maggie Drozdowski took to the sea with her friend Sarah O'Donnell. After strapping their surfboards to their legs, the pair jogged into the water and paddled out from the shore at 110th Street Beach in Stone Harbor. It was a glorious sunny afternoon, perfect for catching some waves. But their surfing trip was about to take a sinister turn. Stone Harbor on New Jersey's southern tip attracts thousands of visitors each year. Situated 30 miles south of Atlantic City, visitors are drawn to the white sandy beaches, the sailing excursions, boutique downtown shops, and the promise of excellent surf. Maggie and her family had traveled from Chester County in Pennsylvania, 90 miles northwest of the harbor. The surf was good. The two 15-year-old friends were enjoying the rush of the waves and the freedom of the great outdoors. But the pair wasn't alone. As they rode the waves, something lurked beneath the surface. A predator was on the prowl. It honed in on the two girls, investigating as it came closer and closer. Suddenly, a large wave knocked Maggie from her board. She fell into the water. When she surfaced, she looked around for her surfboard and grabbed hold of it. Her body and legs dangled in the water as she tried to pull herself back on board. But before she could do so, she felt it. Something large grabbed hold of her left foot. She didn't realize what it was at first, but it was strong and powerful. It had her in its grip and pulled her underwater. Unable to take a breath of air, Maggie's lungs felt as though they were going to burst. The pressure on her lower leg grew as she tried to kick the animal off, frantically shaking her leg and kicking with the other. Terrified, Maggie screamed under the waves, bubbles escaping from her mouth as she fought for the surface. Looking up, she could see shards of sunlight penetrating the water. She reached upwards, desperately trying to pull herself to safety. But she kept being pulled downwards. She kept kicking her leg, furiously trying to break free, but the creature held on. It felt like an eternity, but miraculously, she felt her foot pull free, free from the jaws of a shark and she kicked for the surface. When she felt the cool air on her face, she gasped and took in a deep breath. She yelled at her friend Sarah, who paddled over. She splashed about in the sea, panicking and shouting that she had been bitten by something. Sarah told her to get on her board immediately and paddle to shore. Maggie climbed onto her surfboard, lying flat and pulling at the water with her hands. A trail of blood leaked from Maggie's torn foot, a trail that enticed sharks nearby a tantalizing scent spilling into the ocean behind the two girls. Together, they inched towards the beach. With every minute that passed, Maggie's adrenaline surged. Was it still out there? Was it following them? Were they going to make it back to the shore? With her foot out of action, Maggie didn't manage to catch a single wave into shore. Instead, she paddled the whole way. The progress was slow. The beach never seemed to get any closer. Her arms were aching. Salt water stung her eyes, but she was focused, focused on getting out of the water as quickly as possible. She didn't know how badly damaged her foot was. She hadn't taken the time to investigate. That didn't matter right now. It was an agonizing four minutes of frantic paddling before they made it to the shallows and jumped off their boards. They ran out of the sea and sat down on the beach, breathing heavily they had made it. They had survived what they were soon to realize was a shark attack. Sarah didn't realize the seriousness of her friend's injury. She assumed Maggie had been pinched by a crab or something. It never crossed her mind that it could be a shark and that it could have been a very different ending. But when they inspected Maggie's injury, they realized just how lucky they had been. It suddenly dawned on the two girls that it had been a shark that had bitten Maggie's foot. 
But what kind of shark and what size, they will never know. They never saw the animal. There was no sign of it in the water. No warning and no time to prepare for the attack. Sharks often test out their prey by biting it first. Only then do they realize that humans aren't their typical prey and they move off. But all too often, that first bite can be fatal, usually due to the blood loss the victim suffers. Only once they were out of the water and on the safety of the land did Maggie start to feel the pain from her injury. The deep gashes began to sting, her lower leg throbbed. They needed to get medical help as soon as possible. Infection can spread rapidly throughout the body following a shark bite. The two girls wrapped the foot up in a towel before Sarah helped Maggie hobble back across the beach with her surfboard. They made it back to her family, who was nearby. Deep lacerations covered her foot and calf. Blood oozed from the open wounds and spilled onto the sand. The blood flow was so great that Maggie feared she may lose her foot. She didn't know the extent of the damage. They called emergency services and volunteer firefighters were the first responders to arrive on the scene. They began dressing Maggie's foot, trying to apply pressure to reduce the blood loss. She was then lifted onto an ATV and driven across the sand, before being transferred via ambulance to Cape Regional Medical Center. Once she was there, she received six stitches to close up her wounds. Although Maggie and Sarah didn't see the shark, the New Jersey State Southern Regional Medical Examiner said the injuries were consistent with a shark bite. Having survived the attack, Maggie has said that she is afraid to enter the water again. She knows how lucky she is to have survived, but it'll be a while before she paddles back out on her surfboard again. For a short while after the attack, Maggie moved about on crutches with her foot still heavily bandaged. She wanted to share her story in the hope of raising awareness to other beachgoers and surfers who entered the water. Her attack came just days after two men were bitten while fishing in the Florida Keys. The beaches along Stone Harbor weren't closed following Maggie's attack, but officials warned people to be extra vigilant and to take precautions, such as removing reflective jewelry and avoiding swimming in or near fishing areas. Shark attacks in New Jersey are incredibly rare. Since records began, there have only been 16 documented attacks in the state, with the previous attack happening back in 2006. In fact, Gavin Naylor, the director of the Florida Program for Shark Research, said that you're 200 times more likely to drown than you are to be bitten by a shark. As far as shark attacks go in the United States, Florida is the shark bite capital of the world.